plant cuticle is a waxy outer covering on plants and has a primary role in water conservation, but is also an important barrier against the entry of pathogenic microorganisms. The cuticle is made up of a tough cross-linked polymer called cutin and a protective wax layer that seals the plant's surface. The waxy layer of the cuticle is obvious on many plants, appearing as a shiny film on the ivy leaf or as a dusty outer covering on the surface of a grape or cabbage leaf, thanks to light scattering crystals present in the wax. Because the cuticle is an essential adaptation of plants to a terrestrial environment, understanding the genes involved in plant cuticle formation has applications in both agriculture and forestry. Today we'll show the analysis of plant cuticle mutants identified by forward and reverse genetics approaches. Hi, my name is Patricia Lam from the Laboratory of Lyrica Kunst at the Department of Botany at UBC. Today, myself and others are going to show you how these plants, Arabidopsis, can be studied to understand how plants make cuticular wax. I'm Miao Wen from Reinhard Jether's lab at UBC. I'll be showing you how we analyze chemical composition of cuticular wax using gas chromatography. And I'm Alan DeBono from the Laboratory of Lacey Samuels, also at the UBC. And I'll be showing you how we analyze the crystal structure on the surface of Arabidopsis using cryo-scanning electron microscopy. Our overall goal is to understand how plants take ordinary fatty acids of 16 or 18 carbons, extend them to very long chains of 26 to 34 carbons, then modify them into protective lipids that we find at the plant surface. So let's get started and I'll show you how we identify cuticular wax means using forward and reverse genetic approaches. Hi again, so here we have a cuticle mutant of Arabidopsis, which we call Ercifero, which means not bearing wax. Visual screens were used to isolate these mutants, meaning that they were identified by sight. When you look at the mutants, you can see that the inflorescent stems of wild-type plants is whitish, while the mutants have dark green shiny stems. One of the mutants that was isolated in this type of visual screen, done by Martin Corneef and his co-workers, is this one, called Ercifero-4, or Sir 4 Another way of discovering cuticle mutants is with a reverse genetics approach, choosing candidate genes and then studying plant lines with that genes disrupted. In these mutants, tDNA was used to disrupt the gene of interest. tDNA is transfer DNA, a segment of DNA inserted into the plant by Agrobacterium tumefaciens. In nature, this bacterium infects tDNA as part of its infection process, but scientists have disarmed this bacterium so it is not pathogenic and uses it as a tool to transfer DNA into plants. In this case of our study of the cuticle, we used the tDNA to disrupt the gene for a cytochrome P450 enzyme, which we now call Ma1. In order to confirm that our tDNA insertion has disrupted the Ma1 gene, we perform PCR. The PCR gel shown here confirms that the tDNA insertion is in the gene of interest. When two gene-specific primers are used to amplify wild-type DNA, we see a product shown by the band in this lane. But if the tDNA interrupts it, as in the mutant, there is no product. Conversely, using primers specific for the tDNA and gene, a product is only seen in the mutant. We typically look for homozygous mutant lines where both the maternal and paternal copies of the gene are disrupted. However, when one copy of the gene is disrupted by the tDNA and the other copy is still wild-type, the PCR results are mixed like this. Now that I've shown you how to identify the cuticle mutant sir 4 ma one Miao will show you how to identify chemical composition using gas chromatography. Thanks, Patricia. All right, let's go analyze the cuticle. Before performing gas chromatography, the soluble wax compounds must be removed from the plant surface by dipping it in chloroform. Chloroform completely removes the soluble wax, but not the cutin from the plant. After solubilizing the wax components, the chloroform wax mixture is injected into the gas chromatography column, where they will be heated and sent through on a stream of gas. Different compounds from the wax mixture stick more or less to the walls of the column, separating the compounds, and they come out one after the other at the other end of the column. Then as the compounds pass over the flame ionization detector, we see the peaks. The retention time of each peak is characteristic for different compounds, 
And using mass spectrometry, we have identified each of the components of Arabidopsis wax. Looking at the chromatogram for a wild-type plant, we can see the major peaks that correspond to a 29-carbon stray chain alkane, ketone, and secondary alcohol. The minor peaks are the primary alcohols, aldehydes, The area under the peaks, relative to standard, tells us how much of each compound is present. Here are the chromatograms for the plant lines that Patricia just showed us. Notice how SER4 lacks the primary alcohols and esters. While MA1 lacks secondary alcohols and ketones. These phenotypes can tell us a lot about the function of the gene of interest in the plant. For example, before we knew which gene was mutated in the sulfur line, the phenotype told us that there was a problem in the primary alcohol branch of the biosynthetic pathway. After the molecular identity of that gene was studied in the constant lab, it was discovered that it is part of gene family of fatty acid reductases, which fits well with this chemical phenotype. We can now place these genes on the pathway showing how the plant makes this component of the wax. Okay, that's how we analyze the chemical composition of our cuticle mutants. Now Alan will show us how we examine the structure of cuticle using scanning electron microscopy. Thanks, Meow. Does anyone want to see some pretty images of the cuticle? Let's get to work. When we study the Arabidopsis essoriferin mutants by eye, we can see that they have a dark green, glossy phenotype. When we study wild-type plants, we can see a whitish appearance on the stem. To determine the basis of these phenotypes that we can see with the naked eye, the scanning electron microscope is used to look at the cuticle structure on the surface of the plant. Since we know the chemical composition of the wax from the gas chromatography work, we can see how the chemistry is related to the structure of the wax crystals. These crystals will be the first thing encountered by an insect or a pathogen landing on the stem surface, so they are an important part of cuticle biology. When performing cryo-SEM, plants must be frozen in liquid nitrogen. Plants are kept between minus 150 and 100 degrees Celsius during viewing under the scope. Extremely low temperatures are essential for keeping cells intact because the SEM requires a vacuum to operate and if they were not frozen, samples would dry out and collapse. Now we are ready to dissect SIR4 and MA1 samples along with the wild type patrols. I first remove the flowers and siliques from these plants and then cut out developmentally matched segments of stem from the wild type and mutants. Then I mount them onto the SEM stub. When the samples are transferred to the cold stage of the microscope and visualized, you can see that the surface of the wild type Arabidopsis stem cuticle is covered with crystals. The light scattering from those crystals gives the stem its whitish appearance. Now remember how the stem looked shiny on the mutants. You can see in the SEM images that it lacks the crystals on the surface. So what are these crystals made from and what gives them their funny shapes? The answer is different wax chemical components give different shapes of crystals. In experiments in which a single pure wax compound from the cuticle of a plant was isolated and recrystallized, the crystals form the same shapes as those found on the plants. In Arabidopsis, we believe the crystals are made up of a mixture of compounds and the situation is much more complicated. For example, the chemical analysis done by Miao shows that in SIR4, only the minor component of primary alcohols and their derivative esters are missing, yet the crystals on the SIR4 stem are gone. In the case of MA1, the effect of the mutation in the cytochrome P450 enzyme is that the mutant plants lack two major components of the wax, secondary alcohols and ketones, yet the crystals on the MA1 plants form normally. So you see, the absence of light scattering crystals, which gives the S. seriferum mutants their glossy phenotype, is always positively correlated with a change in cuticle composition. However, a mutant like MA1 would never have been found using this approach because its crystals are normal, 
despite the changes in the chemical phenotype as revealed by gas chromatography. So reverse genetics approaches are also required to identify cuticle genes from known gene families. We've just shown that both forward and reverse genetics allow us to identify Rhabdopsis cuticle mutants. The chemical analysis of mutants phenotype using gas chromatography has helped us to understand how the plants make the protective cuticle lipids. CryoSEM has shown us how the crystals on the surface of the plant change when the chemistry of the cuticle changes. So that's it. Thanks for watching and good luck with your experiments.